highest praise we can give God is hallelujah. Lord, we give you the highest praise right now because you've been so good to us. Eternal God, our Father, we bless your name today. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We are here because this is a Sabbath day, a day of rest, a day of worship, a day of praise. We're here, Lord, because you set this day aside to just come and give you praise. And Father, we stand and sit in your presence. We thank you for bringing us through another week. Many of us been tossed to and fro, but you gave us the strength to keep on anyhow. Many of us suffer sickness, but in the midst of our pain, you came and gave us comfort. We said thank you. Father God, many of us had the burdens of this world on our shoulders. But you came and lift our burdens. We're here today to just say thank you. Death broke in the family circle this past week. Many hearts are broken and they're sad because of losing a loved one. But Lord God, we know that there is a better place than this place. Comfort all the bereaved families, speak to their minds and their hearts and their soul. Let them know, Lord God, that to be in the presence of God is to be absent from this body. So, Father God, we come today just to lift you up for everything that you have done. Father God, we realize, Lord God, that we have been some mischievous children. All of us have done something that we should not have done this past week. Regardless how young you are, how old you are, all of us have done something. But, Father, we're here today to ask for forgiveness. And we know, Lord God, that you will forgive us. We miss the bullseye. We miss the mark. We grieve the spirit and we quench the spirit. But Lord God, we ask for forgiveness and we're going to receive your forgiveness right now. In Jesus' name. Bless this little preacher now that he may bless your children. Hide me once again behind the cross and let them see none of me. But let them see Jesus the Christ. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. And Father God, we're going to receive the victory today. We're going to receive the victory today. Satan, you're a liar. The blood of Jesus is against you. We're going to receive the victory to live. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Reverend Stevenson, for reading our scripture today. Uh, those of you who still have your Bibles and you have your Bibles open to Mark chapter 6. Uh, Mark chapter 6, 
Verse 48, we just want to look at those last five words. Verse 48, would have passed by them. Verse 48, the last five words. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 48, the last five words. Read it with me. Would have passed by them. That's five words, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Would have passed by them. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope Jesus won't pass by me. I, I hope Jesus won't. Won't, won't pass by me. I need you, Jesus, don't. How many of you need Jesus today? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Why? Do not, do not. Say it again. Say it. Come on, Christy. Pass me not, O oh, gentle say. Oh, Lord, hear my heart. Oh, cry. Save it one more time. Save text, here it is in our text. We find Jesus early in the morning. He doesn't have anything to do but walk on water. Here in our text we find Jesus is defying gravity. He's walking on something that is impossible for any man to walk on. He's walking on water early in the morning. It is between three and six o'clock in the morning. We find the Savior walking on water. I wonder why he was walking on, on water. Do I have any inquisitive folks t today wondering why Jesus is walking on water? Early, say early. early, in the morning. Don't you know that weeping may endure for night, but early in the morning. Do I have anybody here, you have been through something in the midnight hour, but early in the morning. Say so early in the morning. Midnight had me down, but early in the morning. The problems of the world on my shoulders had me about to give up early <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, joy. So here we find Jesus walking on water early in the morning. Uh, all three gospels, Mark, uh, Matthew, and John talks about this scenario as far as to Jesus walking on water. Uh, Luke is the only one who does not address this scenario. Mark, uh, Matthew, and John. And we have to piece it together like a puzzle. 
to see what's really happening to cause Jesus to walk on water. As we look at chapter 6 of Mark, especially at uh, 630, verse 30, we find that Jesus' disciples has returned, and they are reporting to Jesus. They have just gotten through a mission. They were on a mission. Jesus sent them out early in chapter 2. In chapter 6, two by two, told them to go and preach the word, teach the word, and gave them power to heal. And they went out preaching and teaching and healing. And now their mission has been accomplished. And now they are reporting back to the teacher. Jesus had taught them now for almost three years, had been with them and teaching them how to preach and to teach, and giving them power to heal. And now they were pointing back to Jesus what they have done. They said, Jesus, we have done a good work. We have healed. We have, uh, we have preached and we have taught your word. And now they're back talking to Jesus. And Jesus looking at them and seeing that they was worried because they have been out working in the vineyard. And when they got back to Jesus, Jesus said to them, let us withdraw and go into a desert place and let us get some rest. My brothers and sisters, every now and then on this Christian journey, you got to take some time for hour and hour. Yes, you got to get some rest. So Jesus realizing that he himself has been working hard and his disciples. So he tells them, let's go into the desert place. Let's go into a place where there's nobody else. And my brothers and my sisters, sometime on this Christian journey, when the problems of this world get you down, you just got to get away from folk because they don't mean you're any good anyhow, most of them. And you just got to just withdraw yourself and you got to get away from folk and get by yourself. And don't you know that when the problems of this world get you down and if you withdraw into your secret closet and if you fall on bending knees, do I have anybody here today you had some problems and, and they was about to get you down. You didn't know which way to turn, but, 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 but you went into your closet all by yourself and you called on the name of Jesus. Do I have any folk in here? They don't sound, you don't sound like you had any problem, but if you haven't had any, keep on living. You're going to have some, and when you have some, you better learn how to just steal away and fall on bending knees and call on the name of Jesus. Have you ever had a problem, you need some help, and you call on the name of Jesus? You felt like he wasn't going to come, and you just kept on calling, but I'm glad today that Jesus don't always come when we call him. He knows when to come. And he knows how to come. And when he come, I tell you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you need, if you call him up, he will come. He may come early in the morning. He may come at the noonday. He may come in the evening. But I serve a God, no matter what you're going through. And if you just steal away and just call, y'all going to help me. I, I, if y'all don't help me, I just call on the Holy Spirit. He just called on the name of Jesus. And he'll show up, and when he'll show up, he'll fix it. Do I have any fixed folks in here? Do I have any folks in here that something was wrong with you? You had something going on in your life, and you called on the name of Jesus, and he fixed it for you. I'm glad he fixed it. And when he fixed it, it is fixed. But every now and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to get away to yourself. 
and, and just talk to him. Tell him all about your, your troubles. And, and, and he will. I leave us slow down. So they went into the desert place. But the people knew the power that the disciples had and that Jesus had. And the Bible said they, they came from everywhere. Somebody saw them go into the desert. You know, you got folks watching you. Yeah, you see where you go. They're watching you. See what you're doing. Don't fool yourself now. Folks are watching you. Yeah, some folks just watch you because they ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. Some folks watching because they're trying to find some stuff on you. But folks are watching you. So they saw Jesus and the disciples go into the desert. They began to come from all over. And they went into the desert. And when Jesus saw the multitude, the Bible said, uh, Councilman Myers, that he had compassion. Yeah, when Jesus saw the multitude, he had compassion on the multitude. Bear in mind, now they were in the desert and they've been following Jesus for a while. And they, and they found out where he was and they came to him. And now the Bible said that Jesus had an opportunity when they came to him and the disciples. The word said that he began to teach them. And not only did he begin to teach them, but he had compassion on them. And don't you know, my brothers and sisters, as a child of God, we got to have compassion for people. We got to know how to love people. Matter of fact, if you want to know if Jesus is in your life, you just got to learn how to love. And if you can love your neighbor, then you know Jesus is with you. When you see your brothers and sister down, if you reach down and you give them a helping hand, you got compassion in your life. So we need to be a little more compassionate and stop talking about folk and stop running folk down. And if you're a child of God, you, you have no room to run anybody down. You, you have no room to talk about anybody. You have no room for pointing fingers at nobody. You have no room. Because the same God yeah. Say the same God. Yeah. Pick you up. Out of the mark in the mark. The same God that turned you around and plant your feet on the side of the ground. The same God that take those same folk that you're running down and have mercy and compassion on them and they can be Jesus had compassion. I, I love that. I love um, uh, to serve a God that has compassion. So Jesus saw that they was with them now for a period of time. And Jesus asked uh, his disciples uh, a question that seemed to be impossible for them to do. Um, Jesus said, uh, first of all, disciples said, let's send the people in town to get food to eat. But Jesus turned to the disciples and asked them a question that seemed to be impossible. Jesus said to the disciples, what do you have uh, to give them? Uh, you need to take care of their needs. Find out what you have to give them to eat. And the disciples said, well, we only have five loaves and two fish. You know, my brothers and sisters, every now and then, Jesus asked us to do the impossible. 
And when it seems impossible to us, Jesus has a reason for asking us to do the impossible. Just because it seems impossible, it does not say it can be possible. Because if Jesus asks you to do the impossible, it is obvious that he has already. Come on, somebody, somebody. Here. If he asks you to do the impossible, he knows already that you can't do it. And he have already mapped it out. He have already figured out how to get you to do it. And if he asks you to do the impossible, don't worry about how you can do it. You just do what he says do. And when you do what he says do, Jesus will fix it for you. Do I have it again? And they're fixing folks in here. Jesus may seem like you may be uh, uh, you may be confronted with something that seemed to be impossible, but don't worry about it. Jesus will fix it again for you. Two fish, two fish. Here, now bear in mind that here, here in Mark. The disciples looked among themselves and they said, well, we only have five loaves and, and two fish. And, and if you really want to know where the five loaves and two fish come from, the disciples didn't have anything. They didn't have anything to, to give the people. But, but they came up with five loaves and, and two fish. Yeah, yeah, every now and then you may not have anything to help nobody with, but don't you know that God will make a way for you? Don't you know that God will make a way for you? Do I have any make a way folks in here? Yeah, yeah, you didn't know uh, where your next meal was coming from. Uh, you didn't know how you're going to pay your bills. Uh, you didn't know what your children was going to do. Uh, do I have any? Yeah, 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 do I have? No matter what it is, I know that he will make a way. Grandma said uh, yeah, he will show up. And when he show up, he will show out. And he will make a way. And somebody here today, I can feel it in my spirit. You're going through something. You're confronted with something. You seem like that there will not be a way. But Jesus, he will show up and he will make a way. I don't know how, but he will make a way. I ain't gonna worry about how he makes the way as long as he. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have anything. Uh, many, many times I didn't have anything. But Lord have mercy. <laughs> I didn't know where the next meal was going to come from. I didn't know how the situation was going to be worked out. But Jesus, somehow, yeah, he, he, he'll fix it for you. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me slow down a little bit. So, 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 in order to find out where the, where the fish and, and, and the loaves come from, you all know anyhow because uh, the other gospel. Yeah, yeah. Matthew talks about a little lamb. Uh, a little boy was in the crowd. The disciples didn't have anything, but thank God that a little boy had something. A lot of theologians said that, that the mother knew that her son was going to go out and follow the multitude, and she wanted to make sure that he had his lunch. And thank God for the lunch of the little boy. And they took the, the lunch of the, the little boy. And, and, and the Bible said that, that Jesus blessed the five loaves. Y'all know the story. And the two fish. Jesus looked up to heaven. My brothers and my sisters, if you ever want God to do something for you, all you got to do is just look up. When you look up, yeah. Every now and then when you're down low as you can go. All you got to do is look up. 
Jesus took the five loaves and two fish and he looked up. That's why every now and then I love to look towards the hill from whence cometh my help. But I can't find nobody else when nobody else is around. All I got to do is just look towards the hill. And I know that my strength and I know that my help does not come from man, but my help comes from the one who made the hills. And his name is Jesus. When I am lonely, he will. Oh my God. Oh. So, 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 so here, so here, so here, so here, Jesus looked up, and, 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 and that's why we need to take our, we need to teach our children that before they eat, they, they, they need to bless it. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you are. Before you eat, you can go out to the finest restaurant and all of the food paying all of that money for it, and they bring it before you, but you so high on your horse. You can't look up and thank God for the plate that he provided for you. Yeah, yeah, I ain't talking with nobody in here, but, but I have been out and I seen folk, they, they get the food, they don't even pray over it. Yeah, 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 you get better be careful when you eat other folk food. You, you, you better pray over it. You don't know what those folks doing back there in their kitchen. You better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't know what you eat. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave that alone. So here. Here, here. Here, Jesus looks up and he, he prays before he tells his disciples to tell the folk to sit down. And after he prayed, he took the five loaves and the two fish and gave it to the disciple and said, now feed them. Now the Bible said that there was approximately about 5,000 folk. Lord have mercy, this is one of Jesus' greatest miracles. Yes, with five loaves and two fish, he feeds 5,000 folk. That's not counting the children and the women. And if you add the children and the women, there's approximately about 15,000 folks. I tell you, when Jesus lay his hands on it, he'll make nothing something. He'll bless you abundantly until your cup will run over. They said that they had enough to feed 15,000 folk. And, and after that, they picked up the fragments and they picked up 12 baskets. I tell you, when Jesus blesses your situations, when he blesses you, he blesses you abundantly. I don't worry about all oh, the blessings. I just want the overflow. I don't want one of the five fish. I just find the two fish. I just want the overflow. Flow. I don't want anything from the fire low. I just want the overflow. Man, when he blesses you, he blesses you abundantly. So here, let me hurry, let me hurry, hasten. Let me hasten. It said that after Jesus performed this miracle, it said that he sent his disciples over the Sea of Galilee on the other side. And Jesus sent the multitude away. And Jesus went up in the mountain. And he went up in the mountain to pray. Jesus always withdraws after he performed a miracle. He always withdraws and prays. And now as he sent his disciples over the other sea, across the sea, Jesus is up in the mountain. And the Bible said that it is evening time. Now listen to this. It is evening time. And Jesus, after he get through praying, matter of fact, he prayed all night long. But it is evening time. And he's up on the mountaintop. It is evening time. And he looks towards the Sea of Galilee. And he see his disciples toiling with rolling the boat. A storm 
had came up all a sudden. And now the disciple is caught in the midst of the storm. It is evening time. My brothers and my sisters, the storms of life don't have a particular time to come into your life. A storm may come into your life in the morning. A storm may come into your life at noon. A storm may come into your life in the evening. But my brothers and my sisters, a storm will come. So Jesus looking, he saw his disciples rowing and toiling in the midst of the storm. Bear in mind now, this is the evening. And the Bible said that Jesus began to walk on water the fourth hour of the night. And now the fourth hour of the night is between three and six o'clock a.m. Bear in mind that Jesus saw them in the evening and he saw them in trouble but he didn't go to them right away and my brothers and my sisters sometimes Jesus allow us to go through stuff yes he don't always come but he knows when they come yes it was evening time when he saw them in the storm but the Bible said that it was the fourth watch three o'clock in the morning that let me know that Jesus was up in a mountain all night long praying to God and when he looked when he saw his disciples on the sea and I tell you what he did he just looked and he saw his disciples and my brothers and sisters I'm not contradicting myself but when you're going through something you need to call on him but he knows what you're going through before you call on him because he looks at you and to see you're going in and you're coming out he already know what you're going through he already know that you might be in a bad place he already know that you've been tempted he already know that you got midnights in your life he already know because he looks at you he see everywhere that you go and everything that you do you don't have to tell him but we just got to tell him anyhow all he does is look and he see what you're going through and what I like about it when he look and see what I'm going through even though I go into my closet and I fall down on bending knees and call on his name and when he don't show up when I want him to show up he always shows up on time it might be in the midnight hour he's on time it might be three o'clock in the morning he's on time it might be six o'clock clock in the morning he's on time when he come he's always yeah he's always on time you might be in a bad place today you might be in darkness today but he knows all about your troubles and he's gonna show up when he want to show up the Bible said he showed up to help his disciples early in the morning. It was dark and he almost passed them by. But thank God if you see him coming, you just got to know how to call out. But it said that the disciples saw him coming and they began to call on the name of Jesus. All you got to do is just call him and he will hear your humble cry. I'm glad today that I was on my way to hell and I called on the name of Jesus. He picked me up and he turned me around and planted my feet on solid ground and I'm glad today. God and Joe, y'all know now what time it is. Yeah, y'all don't need to be back there. You need to be at there. Yeah. yeah. So here Come on, God, and Joe. Uh, y'all can deduct their check today if y'all want to. I won't say anything. Uh. Here, here, Jesus. I'm glad that he looks 
and he sees my every footstep. Yeah, we all go through something. Life gets hard, gets hard every now and then. Trouble on every side. On the sea of life, you're going to run into some storms. And your ship is going to be rocked back and forth. But thank God, the one who created the sea. Thank God, the one who created the wind. Thank God, he's able to speak. And the wind will obey. He's able to speak. And the sea will obey. Jesus would have passed them by. But they cried out. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if you're going through something, Jesus is coming your way. He may not be walking on water, but he just might be walking down the street. But he's coming your way. You may be going through something, I'm telling you, he's coming your way. Your children acting up, he's coming your way. Yeah, your significant one, he's acting up, but he's coming your way. The doctor's acting up telling you that there's no help for you, but he's coming your way. And when he shows up, he's going to make everything. Everything be all right. You're here today and you're about to give up. You've been struggling for a long time. You're about to give up. But I'm here to let you know today that Jesus, he's coming your way. <laughs> you don't have to be like the woman who was sick for 12 long years. You don't have to crawl to get to him. He's coming your way. All you got to do is a help. I need to Jesus. All you got to say, Lord, have mercy. I need you, Jesus. If there's someone here today, you want to call out to Jesus, call out to him. No matter what situation you're going through, call out to him. No matter what type of problem you got, call out to him. And if you have never accepted him, as your personal savior just call out to him jesus pass me not O gentle savior while you're going somewhere else help me don't pass me back the doors of the church are open maybe there's someone here today who have never accept christ as your personal savior won't you come and give him your life today? Oh, I need you, I need you, I need you, Lord, I need you. Know what he's done for me. He gave me, he gave me. He gave me the victory. Oh, yes, I love you. I love him. I love him. I really love, I 